The gear productivity ratio. It's been a few years back since I've done this video. That was my first sort of like viral video. Do you really need all those synthesizers? A question at a time that I thought had the answer, yes, of course. But many years later, and much more gear later as well, something came up on my Discord page where one of the patrons addressed a topic that's been hot and fiery on the Electronauts forum. For those of you that don't know, the Electronauts forum is a forum talking about um, electron gear. So the Electronauts were talking about, I was somebody that got this gear out of storage and said like, you know what? I've got all these boxes, but it seems like the more gear I have, the less music I make. So the debate now is, do you need a lot of gear to make music? So that's going to be today's video. If you're ready for that, let's go do that right now. Hey yo, what's up? I'm in Little Kitchen and thank you for watching another video. Now, if this is your first time here, do not hesitate to click subscribe and hit that notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in loop and you will not miss out on anything. Stick around till the end of this video, I'll tell you all about Discord, Patreon, I'll tell you about what's hot and what's not, and I'll tell you about how you can get closer to our cool community, our little niche on the web. I do believe that there was a time once where having a room or a table full of equipment really invoked some sort of a status. You know, the doorless world has seen some development as well, but when it comes to being productive and trying to just like make music, um, a pitfall is a lot of people think that the box is going to change their life. Now, what I do is the same thing as what Octave One is doing. They have mini loops for everything. So I think that their one baseline consists of maybe five boxes. They can just like build it up in intensity. I am constantly talking about band members. No matter what the, the manual tells you, if you think that your Octatrack or your MPC should only be handling drums, don't care if it can do everything else. Yeah, but don't you use it as a looper? It can do this, it can do that. I know, I know it can serve press mode from a version. I don't care. If I need it to do this one task, that is what it will do for me. Can you have the same musical impact with as with not a lot of boxes? Is that possible? That's the thing that I'm trying to do. I love my electronic orchestra. I love it. I love my Octatrack for drums and I love my MPC for the midis. I love my bass synthesizers for the notes that they're playing. Kink, for instance, who told me, this shit, dude, I kept losing stuff in the airport. I'm flying all the time. For me, it's not the most convenient thing to just bring the whole studio. And he's not like where Octave One is, where Octave One says, this is what we need, this is what you need to rent. If you don't get it, we're not playing. Well, that's a simple concept in itself. So I will show you today on how I set up my sound and what I think is an important sort of like thing to think about maybe right yeah if you got any questions just leave them in the comment section below all right right let's get the show on the road and it might be kicking in an open door to some of you guys if you follow this but for a lot of people still no it's still um a thing now the mpc is doing a few things it's the heart of the operation i can stress that literally everything you see right here when it comes down to effects, when it comes down to the MIDI mapping, when it comes down to bass, when it comes down to poly stuff, when it comes down to filtering, can be done with this one machine. So, end of the video, thanks for watching, catch you next week. <laughs> nah, but the, it can be done with the MPC. However, I have found that you do not want to stress uh, one box out with too many tasks. For some reason, there are a few boxes that are just not reliable over a course of time. So the longer you perform, you find hiccups. Uh, nice, this is my vintage, vintage crackle knob. Everyone should have one. Vintage crackle knobs on the Minitar. So I can do a lot of stuff there. What I want is, as I stated before, I would love to have my workflow be a little bit more uh, spaced out so everything does what it needs to do. So I'm using the MPC just for MIDI tasks, which means there is just tracks here. There's some drums coming from here as well. But on this track, let's do classic progressive track and let's just see how that works. The drums are coming from the octa track as well as certain sounds. So I've spaced it out that the first six sort of like channels or tracks are drum sounds. 
and the track seven is some sort of a melodic content kind of vibe so I can build my way around here. So either I'm working on some MIDI information, playing stuff in here. For instance, I was on track, what was it, track four. Let's uh, say mini tower. Yeah, that's a mini tower. So just to prove that I'm not lying, the mini tower is over. Playing it from the subsequent over here, which is sitting atop of a 19 inch rack case of a few things that I will talk about later. Now, so it means that the drums are all coming from the octa track. And the octa track can also do a lot of stuff, but I don't I think that the MIDI is a, lacking a bit. I don't I want to play polyphonically, I want to make music. I'm more of a song-based dollars producer, so I'd love something that I can manipulate a little bit more than the MIDI over on this side. If you just make loop-based stuff, techno stuff, monophonic um, uh, 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 things. Uh, in, in terms of the MIDI, then the Octa track will suit you, no problem. But then if you go the Electron route, there's other boxes that you can uh, align with this. This is not a setup. So for me, those two things work together. Now, if I was to lower whatever the MPC is playing, now nothing plays on the MPC. Let's do it like this. I've got my colored faders right here. The first one is the mini tar that Not a crackling knob, crackling knobs is the new vintage sound. Kick drum is sitting over here on this one red one. The next red fader is the stereo output. So there's three outputs coming out of the octa track right here. Um, so that's how I, I, I manage the octa track playing. If I put it in place, nothing. So, and I really take care of what sounds go where because I don't want to mix everything. If you want to keep it simple, um, this concept is all about how you should space out the band members with two tasks with different things. And I think that if you watch this video, you'll go like, oh, wait a minute, I know that I can do that with maybe this box or that box. So the fact that I've got so much equipment sitting here, that's not what you really should take away from it. Just think on, okay, how does he space his stuff out then, you know? How does he do it? Now the kick drum is sitting on track one, which doesn't play because it's closed. Now you can hear the kick drums playing. That's the only thing that I stock separately out of these outputs because I, uh, for one reason, have an XLR sitting here because I will use the preamps because the preamps on this Midas DM12 mixer are pretty cool. And it's best to just like, instead of the line input, use the, the preamp so your kick gets a little bit of oomph. So out of, I think it is track six, my kick is coming out separately. It might be a stereo kick, but you know, I just want my kick to be mono going on a channel. That's that. And then the rest of the drums are sitting next to it. So I can mute my kick here. I can mute my kick here. Simple. Next to it, the trusty 808 closed hi-hat for the sound that I'm making, right? So we're going to go into a progressive track with some vocals also that, um, and the vocals are also coming from the MPC. Now, these two, in as a way, if I had needed to travel, if I had to just like hop on a plane, this ideally could be it. These two, with a few controllers, I can use this as a mixer. I need to map out a lot of stuff, which I do think is not always the most reliable option here on the MPC. You go in, you say go to MIDI control, then you have to turn your mapping on all the time. When you turn off your MPC, you have to turn the mapping back on. And I, I've, it's happened to me before that I've lost certain things, but okay. It can be done, right? And I think if you know a re more reliable uh, way of working your MIDI controller, if, let me know in the comment section what it is that you're using. I'm keen to hear, to learn. Okay, back to the Octatrack. So here, as you can hear, am I already using, and I think it's a dark verb, yeah, there's a, a snare drum with a dark verb engaged. There's nothing here. The my mix is on 50. So that spaces out already a bit of the mid-range. Which means you don't need a lot of drums extra because this is cool. If you use your reverb like this, you're going to end up using more stuff. Adding more stuff in would mean more boxes or more gear. So I'm trying to keep it simple. And as a, yeah, the productivity should be try to use stuff in moderation. The less 
you'll hear it. The batter is going to sit in the mix eventually, right? Okay, cool. Now, then there's an 808 uh, open head that I use. So this is all neat and nice and sitting underneath. Mind you, my kick drum does a boop 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 as you can hear. It's a dirty kick, it's not the cleanest of kicks. And I did that deliberately because I need also some sort of a breakbeat kind of feel, something that has a little bit of noise to hang off my drums so that it um, saturates the drums uh, naturally instead of me having to put another box or another saturation or another plugin or whatever or something. So I'm trying to just keep my sim samples uh, as cool from the get-go already, right? Now, because I'm using this for... Then there's a top loop here. Right, yeah. This is just classic progressive house stuff, right? This is a loop. I've processed this loop on my um, door where I used a transient shaper to keep it instead of the I just chopped it up to chip 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 nice and short, nice and percussive. Now this goes on and goes on and goes on, different measures. So the octa track does different speeds on certain tracks. I mean this you can see is like one bam 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 and then this is going two, 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 one, one. So you can see here that different things are happening. This one goes for the full 64 steps. Yeah, it's all doing its, its thing. Now there's a tom, of course, playing here. Do, 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 boo, boo. Still think that my clap is a little bit on the louder side, but you know, for now it's all cool, right? So this could work. I mean, if you cannot dance to this, what the hell are you doing on the dance floor, right? Now, track seven, it's got the first musical information. This is how I set my track up. And if I have that in my mind, I can just sit at home with the octave track on my lap and just work this already, work it into a track that uh, maybe a singer or a guitarist or whatever you, or maybe a DJ or a percussionist can work uh, along with me. Uh, so I'm trying to keep it very, very, fairly simple. Okay, listen to this. I will go into uh, my FX1 page because out of the box, FX2 is delay and FX1 is always going to be filter. Now, I filtered it down with uh, knob B and when I turn it on, you hear something of a loop that I've stuck in there. Now, if you had to do this with a synth, it means you have to put an LFO on there, you have to put the other stuff. I just sampled this in. And I keep it as mellow as I can, just to give a little bit of an uh, energetic feeling. Again, this sample does two things as well. There's another so a sound on there that you don't hear. Well, three something. But seldom am I opening it up this far, right? So how does this work in the grand scheme of things? So the only really bright thing that you'll hear out of my drums that makes it a little bit more hi-fi sounding is the clap and that close hat, right? So that means that I've got full control over that mix. I don't want my kick to be on this, um, on this thing, but I do want some sort of a kick. And that's where the loop comes in, right? This loop. This loop on five is giving you a bit of a of a vibe, right? Now, in order to, for your drums to work, it means that everything needs to really sit neatly together like a jigsaw puzzle before you can proceed to the next sort of like vibe, to the next level. So this is already my octa track. I don't want to do anything else. I can loop, I can say, but I like to this way. I think it's a bit of an, a 909 kind of workflow, which is what I like and I love it to death, right? Okay, out and the strings in. Now, let's stop it. The Akai is connected to the um, 
Octodrag, or I should say the Octodrag is connected to the Akai. So if I play start here, this will run. And I've got the black box that's sitting over here connected to the Octodrag. So there's a little train of MIDI going from once I hit, hit this. Everything is moving. Then I'll stop it. And I will go in and say, I'll arm those two. So turn it off. Turn you off. Stop, stop, stop. Turn it on. Which means that I've got some effects on the black box. Now, this is also a thing that I can easily do on the Akai MPC Live. But for me being, I just need this thing to just like be straight in and do what it needs to do. It's going to do MIDI, it's going to do a few strings, it's going to do different things later on. So I already have given a lot of tasks to the MPC Live. So hmm, I don't want to stress it because I've seen the software um, getting tired after long sets. Um, after three hours it starts to jitter a bit. I have the screen hang. I had last Saturday even, for some reason there was so much sub bass that the Pads became irresponsive, so I was lucky on my next sequence page that I could go through my songs as I'm using four um, squares per song. But it's not cool if pad one jumps to pad 16 on this page. That means all of a sudden there's a different song playing. I was like, oh no. And since I've got the Octatrack aligned with the songs that I'm doing, so for instance, now we have got song six, bank two. So normally this is one song, two songs, three songs, four songs, right? Then this would be five, then this would be six, which means that here bank six is activated and that's how it goes up. So I've got 11 songs, which means I've got 11 um, um, sequences, set, sequence sets here. So going here, which means on the first one, I'll just play um, uh, whatever I need to play. So I'll start here and then you'll hear there's an impact on the black box. And this is a loop that plays for 16 bars. There's a crash on this one. And this uh, MIDI file that corresponds with the little, little squares you see right here. So this essentially is Ableton in a box, right? Now, let's see if we can, for this intro vibe, because this is an intro, as I take the kick, uh, uh, the clap and the, loop out, now all of a sudden it becomes uh, almost a drop of some sort. So these sequences do two or three things. Head. Now you're going to break down. I'll always leave some sort of information running. Pump, 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 pump. This is what my Thomas is doing. So that is already invoking a call and response on the groove. So you know that it, boom, boom, boom. Uh, so, in itself, it's a revolving door that keeps on going, which is what I want because I need to hypnotize you on the dance floor. I don't want you to constantly think when is the next uh, drum roll coming. So, that's how I work this. So, this, and then I feel after a while you get some sort of a bearing where you are. Goes up. Bam. So now you've got the song structure already happening without you doing much, which means you can do a lot of stuff with just the two hands, just spacing stuff away. This is a synth size that can play something. This is the bass line that we're going to work on. So this is my bass player, right? I can debate to have this take turns um, with the sub sequence 37 if I want to, but for just the basic track, I'm going to, going to use the mini tower as a bass line. So also, that means that if you have to travel, this, this, and this can just go in a backpack already and you'll be sweet, right? That, that could work. So you don't need anything else because these white noises, you can stick them on, on your MPC as well. I like to use them because I use more stuff uh, on my uh, black box and it does a few things that the MPC doesn't do. Now, let's open this up. Let's go to the meter page and see if we can Going to record it in. The reverb that you're hearing is coming from the Black Sky and the Digital Delay DD7, right? And the crackle is coming from this knob that I'm hitting again for some reason. Um, okay. Let's see, we're going to do one, two, 
One, two, three. Nice, for this, I think that bass line is working because I know myself, if I play more, I'm going to probably screw it up. Let's see where it is. Where we... Thirty-two beats. Because whatever I played is now going to constantly loop. Nice. Let's listen to that um, bass line in the solo. Long notes. Let's shape the note a little bit. Here's not mine. What's going on? Nice. I'm trying to get a little bit more attack. This is what I want. Ooh. That's the gap decor kind of bass vibe, right? Let's save it. So, which means holding, glide, and release. Um, simultaneously, we'll just um, save the preset. Now, let's see how it sits with the kick drum. Do you hear that the, the kick is in the same key? But I think it's a little bit on the dry, uh, on the dry side. So uh, send two. I got two sends here. Send is going into the digital delay. I always use delay before reverb, otherwise it's going to get too blurry. So you need um, a percussive uh, repetitiveness going into your reverb always. So always uh, delay first, reverb after. And the return. Is here sitting next to it so these two are the returns so i'm making this sound stereo right now going in mono then it comes out stereo into the bl black sky and it comes out stereo so all of a sudden we have spaced our little mono baseline let's play the rest of the drums here Now this sounds cool, right? Already, and but it's still a big desert with bricks lying links le left and right, links left and right. So you need this thingy that I've got right here to sit. Oh, nice! Ba, ba. Again, call and response. So, what is happening right now? My bass line does a little bit of a hop in the first measure of the bar. Ba -da. So that's what I'm looking for, because if I've got that going, it means that this loop is always going to please you. It's not going to sound boring too soon, is what is the theory behind this. Which means, again, you don't need a lot of boxes. Now, in order to space this stuff out, you can clearly see that there's different tasks that I have directed to different things. So you can debate, do you really need this? I, do I need this? I can think this away because I can do it with the MPC. These effects that I've got right here, right? Same goes for the drums, I can do it with the MPC, but if I want to space it out, this is probably how I'm going to do it. I got lost from the minute I started to buy boxes with no clear uh, concept of wh what I was going to use it for, basically. So I thought, okay, I need to just really think. I'm, it's not like me to do it, but I did. I literally sat down with pen and paper and just drew boxes of, I just made a diagram, an algorithmic diagram for myself of how am I going to do this? Because how do I want to perform now? Another thing that I did to save space on the mixer, 
because uh, I don't want to bring anything bigger because to me this needs to be the one. If I bring more, it's probably going to just like go completely nuts, right? So what have I done? I went in and I thought, let's route two outputs out of the MPC into the asset box and go back into the MPC. So, which means output uh, three and four are coming out of the MPC. I don't want to stick them there, stick them through the asset box. In the future, I might go through a smaller mixer, some small form factor that I can stick underneath in the box and route my TG77 that's sitting right here or my VP9000 that's sitting right here that I'm not using at the moment, but I can use more stuff to go into my asset box three um, apart from the stuff that's going in there. But now, if I go to sampler, I'll have to turn my sampler on and then it means that whatever I stick out of there can just go through this thing. Next sequence. Now it's going to go for my next sequence and there's a vocal that's going to be playing. Oh, I love this bass line. It doesn't play on the next um, thing because for my intro I'll leave it out. Let's see where my vocal has gone to. I think it might be somewhere. There. Now this is what's coming from the um, Akai. If you follow my channel, you hear me talk about A, B, C category uh, setups. Now, this loop that you hear right now does an amazing thing in the background to help out the rest of my drums that are here. Click. Another infinite loop. I like this vocal. Just spliced it, so it's freely available. Nice. Okay, and then the next sequence is where more music is going to get played. We'll get there in a second, right? So. So, usually, this is how my intro goes, because the music is only going to play on the third Sequence. So it's six, six, one, six, two, six, three. So I will mute all the drums. That's what I'm going to do right now, except for those strings. I'm not going to go in. See it. 15, 16, two, three, and. And this is where the, the power is. Filter this down. Listen to this. My theme comes in. I can play my kick. Like so. So what I've done is now there's no and not anything. Baseline just playing. I take this out. And it's even more dramatic. So the second time I do this drop, I will take my strings out and then build it up. Play some here. Seven. Open them up. Nice. Tom. That's a drum roll. Going for the next one. One, two, three, go. So I'll build the track up. And this is where I just end up. And then if I have to make a transition, I need to go down. So the first thing that I do is go back to the vocal that I have, which was over here. As you may have said that when I did this, the mother thing started. Oh, I made a mistake. The vocal is going to be on track two. Yes, you saw that, it was very smart. And I'm not gonna wait for another 15 uh, bars to play. So I'll go in next bar, two, three, and go. And then filter it down again. 
Now, I love it because I think this is not the biggest box. You can still travel with it. It fits in the back of my car and just make sure and we build this fly case that everything just went in. And then I'll take the subsequent 37 with me sitting over here. And this is a new addition. Uh, you can't see it right now. I'll just put it on screen. Um, um, but there's a VP9000 that I want to use um, in the future. Uh, Roland VP9000, the very phrase processor it does something it did something really neat at the time um, yeah I think Daft Punk and a lot of people have used that same thing so I've got one why not have it sitting here collecting dust just take it with me you know what I mean simple easy peasy okay now we're going to go uh, back to the first sequence kick out baseline also out and I'll play this Boom. Boop, boop. Doop, doop. Nice, filter this down, take the kick out, and now I've got an extra sequence that I can play with the bass line. And that's how you just really just like, you know, it's um, looking at how can I do what and how does what play, how does it relate to one another. I love the fact that it can work the way it does. This is how I use my setup. I hope that it clarifies a lot of stuff and I also hope that you take away from this that you know you can keep it simple if you would want to. Um, I think this is very open. You know, I didn't uh, use a Tetra, um, but that can play some strings over the top or play certain things. Not everything needs to play at the same time. And I can just do uh, a simple transition. Let's take this out like so. Yeah. And then you'll go to the next track, easy peasy. All right, yeah, well, I guess that that is the way I set that stuff up, you know what I mean? It's not too complicated, but at the same time, it is some sort of a thing that, yeah, that's how it, that's how we can do it, right? That's how it works, that's how it works for me. I see it work, and a lot of people are interested in that kind of vibe, so yeah, I'm happy for that, you know? I think that it does what it needs to do. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far into the video, you are an absolute superstar. Um, if you're in Holland, do check it out. We're doing some a few events soon. There's a kitchen club coming again. Uh, we're racking up stuff for ADE already because we're early, so we got a date lined up for that as well. And yeah, if you want to play, if you want to just be around, want to make some music, do check out Discord. Uh, which is connected through Patreon. I have got a small paywall set up because I do believe that you need to want to be in there because the information that we share is valuable information. And it's cool, but I do think that it's it's just a vibrant sort of like vibe where a lot of people come there for the same sort of reason. You won't be breaking the bank. So for the price of a cup of coffee, you get in the community a month. Mind you, for a price of a cup of coffee a month, you get a cool community of people that want to help you with your music, help you with your travels, even how do you travel, what do you fit in the box, how do you connect stuff, how do you play stuff, how do you mix stuff, how do you produce stuff, you can throw your demos on there. That dance carousel that we came up with is absolutely stunning. So more people are being added to our little dance carousel. Um, yeah, now, I think that that's that. Siri, shut up. So I think that that's that. Um, thank you for watching. I'll catch you next week. Keep watching this space. I'm in a little kitchen and I'm out. Peace.